Uh, I'm Tristan Wirfs. I play for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Nice job again up front. Tristan Wirfs. This is Blue, and in about six weeks' time, Blue is not only going to be an amazing looking dog, but he's going to have the obedience to match. Can you ever take a bite from a dog? Mm -hmm. You want to try? Sure. <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Dog Training with American Standard Dog Training, American Overwatch Canine Services, DIYK9.com, and the one and only Tristan Wirfs. First round draft pick in 2020, went to the Pro Bowl in what, 2022? Yep. He is to football what I am into dog training. <laughs> this is Blue. He is a four month old, beautiful Blue Cane Corso. Tristan just brought Blue here. He's gonna be here for our puppy board and train program. And in about six weeks time, Blue is not only gonna be an amazing looking dog, which he already is, but he's gonna have the obedience to match. How'd you end up finding us? On TikTok, actually. TikTok, see? The <laughs> gift that keeps on giving. We wanted him to be the you know the best that he can be, so. And so we saw a little bit of social issues with, with uh, Mr. Blue, meaning he's just a little stressed out, new environment. In fact, uh, we can bring over Dallas, Dallas just to see how he does. What's nice with a four month old dog though, is we're starting with pretty clean slate. Not a lot of bad habits built up by now. Just a little bit of socialization that we could work on. Typical for the breed, right? Real kind of corsos are very suspicious of strangers, hence why we don't recommend people get them. I can make the exception for Tristan though, because even if Mr. Blue gets out of pocket later on in life, I think you'll be able to handle it. You know what I'm saying? But if you do get one, what you're gonna wanna do is get a really good balanced trainer and get this puppy, get your dog in the program early. Three, four, five, six months old is the sweet spot. Don't wait till your kind of course is two years old, 140 pounds and trying to kill everybody. It's too late. I'm not saying we can't fix it, but why, why let that happen, right? When did you start playing football? Um, oh geez, first grade, second grade. See my point? Now we're talking about Pro Bowl, all right? But now if you waited until you were a freshman in college and started playing ball, do you think you'd be as good as you are now? No. No. All right. So here he is in first grade. Welcome to the welcome to school. All right. And now we're going to make him a Pro Bowl contender. Look at the difference between the equipment we're going to use, right? And what was probably bought at the pet store. Yep. 99% of the stuff at the pet store is straight garbage. So you want to buy the good stuff. Uh, check out our Amazon affiliates link if you want. And we point you out to all the good stuff. So this is steel and leather versus nylon and plastic. Look, this is fine to get you started on a puppy, but that wouldn't work when he's 120 pounds and pulling. So what we're gonna do is have a nice introduction. I know, the stress. Oh yeah, so we're trying to make everything as positive an experience as we can. Let him know that that there is not to hurt him. Just let him get real comfortable with me. The lower I go, the more comfortable he'll be with me. New piece of equipment, it's kind of scaring him at the moment. We don't need to rush it. But that's why we like hungry puppies. See, you can tell I've done this before, right? <laughs> Got him. Got him. We do get clients that come here and they have this fit so loose and when the dog freaks out, which is almost inevitable, they pull out and now we have a loose dog. We have a scared loose dog, which is worse than a loose dog. Now with this style collar, the Martingale, if he were to slip out, it actually cinches a little bit. It gives you a little more control and he can't slip out of it. How big was uh, the dad? He's 170 pounds. <laughs> Big. Four months old. How much does he weigh now? Uh, about 51. It was 50.4 yeah. a week ago. It's rough math for you all at home. But if a dog is growing 10 pounds per month, they will typically hit right at about 100. So 100 to 110. If he's four months old and 51 pounds, you can already do the math. He's, he's beyond 10 pounds per month. He's going to be, I'd say 135, 140. That would be my guess, which to me is actually better than 170. If he ends up being 170, even better, man, even better. For you, if that's what you want, a big dog. Mm -hmm. Bigger is better, but you know, you're gonna have, you know how many comments we're gonna have? It's too big. All right, he's too big, all right? <laughs> they would say the 170 pound male shouldn't be bred because he's out of breed standards. Okay, uh, go get snipped, okay? Yep. You're, you're out of breed standards, yep. come on. Any issues you've had with him from eight weeks to, to four months? Making sure he's socialized and everything, just mm -hmm. taking him places. Like, he's done pretty good. Um, most places we go, it'll just be kind of random. You know, he'll, he'll bark at people and right. people think it's cute now. I was like, oh, no, yeah. we gotta get that fixed. You need him to be very confident around everyone. So what you do is you take hungry puppy to the store, to the mall, to the grocery store, to the beach, 
to the restaurant everywhere. And yes, let people, let him eat out of people's hands. Even if you want to do protection work with him in the future, we want him to become almost like a little thief. Like, oh, you got food? Do you got food? Do you got food? I would rather trim a dog down than build their confidence up later. If you don't take him places or you encourage like, yeah, 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 that's a bad man. And you pull him away from that. He goes, oh, oh. So people who do walk around the mall are bad people is, oh, okay. So I'm going to be on constant guard. We don't want that. Now you have a scared dog. We need him to be overly confident, very confident walking around like Thanos. Thanos don't care. In fact, we might even, you ever take a bite from a dog? Mm -hmm. You want to try? Sure. That's what I'm talking about. We say, don't do that. Engage with me, not that. That's good. I'll take that instead. What we're not going to do is put food in front of that. This is what I want. Yes, I pay for that. I don't put food in front of that, right? We're not going to charge up bad behavior. We're going to charge up. There's an interesting thing we're going to do with him now, actually, and see. Um, it's a little old wives' tale, but we like to show people this little behind the scenes trick. You pick up, even at five, six, seven, eight weeks old, when you're deciding whether you want to pick a puppy or not. You pick them up and put them on their back in your arms. If they're freaking out like they think they're gonna die, it's kind of a softer dog that's gonna be an omega dog. This is not fact, it's an old wives tale. There's a lot of truth behind it. If they're freaking out, it's probably not the dog for you. If they're comfortable but are still trying to fight you, come on over, you can pet them. If they are comfortable, like not freaking out, but trying to kind of fight you out of it, a little bit of the dominant could be an alpha type dog, also might not be the dog for you. What you want is that beta dog that will allow you to do that, not fight, not be stressed, not be uncomfortable, kind of that perfect balance. So we're gonna do that test now. Can you pick him up? He's not freaking out very comfortable with that. Good, that could be because you guys work with him or natural. Next thing is, and he's a big boy, I don't wanna hurt him. passes the test, right? He's not comfortable, but he's not like, oh my God, oh, screaming, biting, clawing. So he picked the winner, it was straight <laughs> luck, but he got to go in. So obviously a lot of work needs to be done on the walk. He's gonna choke himself on that collar or any other flat collar. He doesn't care, it actually makes him pull harder, but that has to be fixed. That's a man on a mission right there. And if you can hear that, choking himself out. He's choking himself out. And what we're gonna wanna do is, for you all bleeding hearts at home and all you Karens, we're gonna be putting a prong collar on him pretty soon. Prong collar is gonna really help eliminate that, but it's more uh, the method than the tool, but the tool will help us do that. Cause he's 51 pounds now, wait till he's 150 pounds pulling like that. Like you could handle it, but it's not gonna be enjoyable, yeah. man. It's not gonna be enjoyable. Look at that. Always like to see what those teeth are looking like. Has he been chewing on a lot of bones? Um, yeah. Yeah, I can tell. So all his, all his puppy teeth are, uh, they're no longer sharp. He's been grinding on some kind of like cow bone maybe. It's like a stuffy one. I think a femur. Oh, you like put peanut butter in it? Yeah. The circular or, ones? Yeah. At this age, not the end of the world, he could crack a tooth on those. That's what, we had him do it like, I just got him those, I put peanut butter in them and then I was like reading shit. I go, you don't want to give them hard shit now because it's, yeah. it'll mess up their teeth. I was like, I was like, oh shit. Even as an adult, give those very sparingly. Yeah. And what we're talking about, the type of bones is they're basically femur bones that are chopped like this into slices. And then there's uh, like bone marrow inside. Even the adult dog, that's, that is a weight bearing bone on a 2,000, 3,000 pound animal. Yeah. And so dog's teeth are hard, but you're kind of grinding uh, uh, diamond against diamond. Like mm -hmm. you're gonna wear down their teeth prematurely and they can, they have enough jaw pressure to crack their own teeth. Cool. So when they go to crack down on a femur bone, something's gonna give. He's a puppy, he'll get a whole bunch of fresh new teeth in. But on those fresh new teeth, we're gonna be a little careful using those weight-bearing bones. So the one that you can give him from, from a cow is rib bones and also one called the kneecap. Now it's not actually a kneecap, it just looks like it. It looks almost like a hockey puck, but rounded over. That's actually, I believe, up in the hip area. It's kind of like a support joint, but they're soft, they love them. They destroy them, you, especially you get them with a little bit of extra meat on them. And those are a softer bone and they crunch through those, they eat them up. All right, we're, we're here with Tristan Wirfs, offensive lineman with the Tampa Bucks. And how much do you weigh, sir? 350 pounds. 350 pounds. And we're actually gonna show him his Akane course so that he may or may not do bite work with in the future, but we have Thanos off screen over there. You can go and pan over to him. 110 pounds of stud McMuffin. 
And I'm gonna show Tristan because we're actually gonna have him hold the leash while we do bite work with Thanos. But what he doesn't know is that a 110 pound dog is like a 220 pound human as far as strength. So we're gonna show him uh, a way to hold the leash. It's a style of, uh, that we call anchoring out. And the reason you wanna anchor out is sometimes when you're doing bite work, it's a game of inches. So you can't have, for instance, if he pulls, if he pulls me, I can't have this happening. That's six inches, 12 inches of play. That's where someone gets bit. So we don't want that. 350 pounds. I'm 215, let's see if I can hold the weight. So what I'm gonna do is anchoring out here on my thigh, try to pull me off my, my balance. It's the test, go, he's a big dude, go. You can pull more. Oh yeah, you can get that grip, here we go. All right, I'm lying to you, he's too big. But you get the idea, that's a big dude. It's a big dude, and you're pulling pretty hard, right? Yeah. That's what he's paid to do. Now, I'm gonna show the reverse of that. You hold it, just hold it regular, right? Now I gotta see, this is a silly game we're playing here. Can I get him to move if he's not anchored out? <laughs> Put your arm here, and you wanna anchor here, right? It's probably some, something similar to, to football. There's probably a way you plant oh, yeah. where I can't move you. Yeah, it's called anchoring down. Anchoring down, hey! <laughs> and there ain't nothing I'm gonna do here, man. There ain't nothing. So pulling, 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 and now cheat forward with your footwork. That's right, right? So now you can inch in and slowly bring him into the bite. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Your job is to keep him safe, or me. I might do the bite work. Okay. That work? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> Give him a little bit of flex. So you don't let him get it, right? Almost get it. You heard that clack? And now he gets it. Ah! Good boy. Oh, it's a good boy. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you tell him, you tell him. Blue, oh, pay boy. attention. Watch and learn, Bubba. And so I was like getting my mental right. I was like, oh, so you shit. Yeah, you stood so still that he kind of, what we call like self-corrected. He went to the end of the line and felt like, damn, I'm yeah. anchored down correct himself on the end yeah, of the line. Like hit, like hit the end of it? Yeah, so sometimes we actually use bungee lines. Watch him. Come up close. The more he barks, the more you activate. More curled in your elbow. That's right. Whoa, there we go. And present again. He's gonna bite it. All right, bad presentation, right? See how he almost came over the top? Good boy. Ooh, he's a superhero. Okay. So what's the difference between a bite from a Malinois and a bite from a Conde Corso? It's kind of like getting like a, a Porsche blowing through a, a plywood wall at 150 miles an hour or a semi truck blowing through the wall at 80. I wouldn't want either. I really wouldn't. <laughs> Take two. And the reason we're taking two is I don't consider myself to be like a weak link, but he makes me feel like, like, <laughs> they think I'm faking. So now we're going to bring in Dallas. How much do you weigh? 170. All right. So 170 plus my 215 puts us at what? 385? So we're, we, got, we got him by 35 pounds now. <laughs> this is stupid. All right, everybody plant out. This is like tug of war, an advanced game. I just, whoever can move a foot first wins. Three, two, one. <laughs> Thanks for being a good sport, yeah. man. I really appreciate it. This is a strong dude. If you're not, you should be watching Tampa Bay Bucks. Number? 78. Number 78, in it to win it. Anything the Tampa Bucks say, we have a slogan here, in it to win it. Anything like the coach says to pump you all up, give me something Our good. little things for the crew. For the crew. Fire the cannons, all of it. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I like that a lot. We're gonna have to steal one of those. All right, for the crew, we'll see you guys on the next one.